Let's talk about Kylo Ren. Yes. He had a rough time in The Force Awakens, and <laughs> so did Han Solo. <laughs> um, One but, more uh, than the other, I think. I think <laughs> the big question is, can Kylo Ren be redeemed? Because where else do you go when you're that far into the darkness, right? And he has a very interesting story because it's not like he's fully embracing the dark, or he's trying to, but he keeps feeling the pull of the light. And I find it very interesting how he views Vader. He fe feels that Vader turning to the end, to the good side in the end wasn't a good thing. He feels like he was betrayed, right? And mm. he was tricked into, and that's a weakness, the thing that he went back to the light. He thinks darkness is strength because whatever Snoke taught him or promised him. Uh, so, for, <laughs> so for Kylo, what, do you think he has a redemption arc? And I point to the, the scene in the trailer where he uh, as he has the line of sometimes you have to kill the past, something yeah. like that. And he's looks like he's going to kill Leia in his little cool new stuff. The tie silence. The tie silence there, which is such a good name. And he hesitates. Yeah. So to me, the line, there's there's good in him, there's still good in him. That echoed out when that played, but what it, what do you think? Yeah, I think that uh, as far as whether or not Kylo Ren can be redeemed, I think he can. I think we are going to witness, I think it's going to be one of the greatest character arcs in sort of modern sci-fi movies uh, by the time episode nine is done. I think that it's the only way they can go because the idea of seeing Kylo Ren dive deeper into the dark side and just like completely lose himself is not that interesting to me. What's interesting to me is seeing how they pull him out of that. Mm. And you know, they, they made a very big statement at the end of Force Awakens with Kylo killing Han, his father, which was like, this guy is about to go, this this is him breaking really bad. Like this is him thinking that this is the only thing he can do, the only sort of path forward for him. And I'm really interested to see how Ryan Johnson um, starts to pull him out of that. I think he can be redeemed uh, because we've already seen him do something so dark and so evil it's almost like he's already at rock bottom and the only way to go from this point is up. He still has one more parent to kill. <laughs> so, I mean, we could see that and we could see him go even farther down, but I do think by the end, we are gonna see him come back up. But he's killed so many people. He killed that, that Lars, Lars Von Tecca, is mm -hmm. that his name? Lars Santeca. Lars Santeca. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, good memory, good memory. Uh, yeah, and he killed Han. Like how could, not only would he need to find redemption in himself, but he would need others to forgive him. I how mean, could Rey, for, even though she only knew <laughs> uh, Han for like 10 minutes, how could she forgive Kylo for doing something like that? Whether or not Rey can forgive her, uh, him, that's one question. But the greater question is, can, you know, uh, we're asking how, how after killing all those people could he be redeemed? Darth Vader killed a lot of people. He killed Obi-Wan, he killed younglings. Younglings, <laughs> Tusken Raider, like he killed- he The was Tusken Raiders. He was responsible for, you know, the Jedi purge, well, with Palpatine, but you know, he was a huge part of that. Um, he was redeemed. It's possible for somebody to go that low and get redeemed. So I, I think as far as Ray and him reconciling, that's kind of a question mark, I think. And that will that will be decided, I think, by by the end of this movie. I think we'll have a much better idea, obviously, of hmm. you know where things stand. Well, with Vader, I think the reason I was okay with accepting his redemption and being okay with that was because, well, he died. Like, right, he he sort of atoned for it, made an emotional connection with his son, sure. and then paid the price. Who but, says that can't happen so do you for think him? Kylo, do you think he can go go on living past the trilogy, or do you think he has to to die to be redeemed, like Vader? Maybe not in this movie, and of course that's you know, this isn't a this isn't necessarily a forecast for episode nine. That would be Let's that would be do tough. it, man. Let's yeah, just get, all right, let's all right, just... you know, we're gonna switch. We'll start doing that. <laughs> uh, but uh, whether or not Kylo Ren survives the trilogy, I would I would probably put my money on no. Really? And I agree with you that there needs to be a price paid, uh, but and you know, I think it's gonna be a similar redemption arc to Vader where he has a moment where he go he turns and he goes, you know what, I have to I have to accept that this is not who I am and I need to 
make up for it. Okay, well, so in The Last Jedi, what do you think that Kylo wants? Because again, let's go back to that moment at the very end of the trailer where he offers a handout. It's cut to make it look like he's offering it to Rey. Yeah. Let's assume that's the case. What does he, what would he want from Rey? I think that he, I think a big part of Kylo's sort of arc in this movie is going to be about um, almost proving himself and sort of finally coming down on the dark side and being like, this is what I want to be. This is, I am going to kill the past. You know, he says that in the trailer again. Uh, but I think it's gonna be him really making these hard choices to uh, give himself over to the dark side. And as far as how uh, Ray plays into that, as far as uh, Kylo wanting to be her teacher, as he tells her at the end of Force Awakens, I think he might see Ray as a chance to really prove himself. If I can show Supreme Leader Snoke that I can turn Rey to the dark side, that I can that I can bring her into the fold, you know, that that will prove that I am I am stronger than Vader as he as uh, we know that he wants from Rey kind of reading his mind. So I think that he's going to see Rey as his chance to prove himself that he is a powerful dark side uh, entity. Okay, I have one more Kylo question. In the trailer, we see he's smashed his helmet mm. and he's not wearing it. And then even in Star Wars Battlefront, uh, the game, there's a skin where he doesn't have the helmet. <laughs> yeah. And he's got the scar, like his new Anakin scar yeah. that Ryan Johnson said he moved. because like, yeah, scooch that. Yeah, over. it looks it looks kind of weird coming down the nose. So I guess it makes sense to give him. He, he now looks more like Anakin, like his idol. Oh like man, Vader. It's, uh, everything rhymes. <laughs> How about that? Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, why do you think he smashed his helmet? Like what's going to be the reasoning there? Yeah, and it's, inter it's interesting to guess too related to that, whether that's like an early, like if that's the first time we see Kylo, oh. maybe. because we know that um, we know that this movie picks up. Ryan Johnson, I think, has said this movie picks up right when Ray hands Luke the lightsaber. Like, there's no time jump uh, that we're aware of at this point. So I think that the idea that maybe Kylo is just getting back to you know the Star Destroyer or whatever and sort of dealing with those emotions because obviously he's an emotional wreck at the end of Force Awakens. It would be interesting to see maybe that's the first time we see him and it sets up this sort of rage, even more instability than we're used to with Kylo Ren. Um, so yeah, I'm guessing maybe that's early on hmm. and, and maybe that's why he smashes the helmet because he's having this identity crisis because, and that helmet is his identity. It's iconic at this point. Um, I think we're gonna see him really struggling with who he is. Like killing his father clearly had a very, very strong effect mm -hmm. on him. Maybe smashing the helmet, because people were saying he's like a kind of a Darth Vader fanboy, mm -hmm. right? And the, the helmet, he's not really wearing it because he needs it, it's because he wants that visage mm -hmm. and he wants to hide who he really is and become this dark side thing. But maybe he feels because he kills his father, he's taken a step towards the darkness and he doesn't need the helmet anymore. Do you think that's what it is? I think that that is actually more a moment of pure rage and and grief and not knowing what to do with those things. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's my guess. Okay. We have some more Star Wars stuff on the site for you to check out. You should check out the nine best Star Wars spaceship scenes we, from all the movies that we've ranked for you guys. We, I think we all know what number one is, right? Probably the uh, the episode one, the escape, the running the blockade. I think that's my number. I'm just kidding. It's not that. It's like, whoa, what? Don't <laughs> um, and then also we have a video for every Star Wars game ever. Be sure to check that out on the site. <sighs> and for more on IGN, be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch.